So now on to the collisions. We have the in-between spots right here with an object merge, and I've frozen this at frame 30. And what we want to do is extract any of the pieces that are going upwards in the Y direction. So to do that, let's middle mouse, see that we're working with polygons right now, and change that by using an assemble sop. If we have that, say create pack geometry, and we transfer over V for velocity, now we, we middle mouse and we have V that we can use to blast things out. So we'll say blast, and if you are velocity.y, and your value is less than or equal to, let's say, 0.1, then go ahead and get rid of that. But you need to do this on points. And that just leaves us with the pieces that are heading upwards in the y direction. Now from here, we can use the add sop and just keep all the points. And these points are going to be awesome because now we have some points to look at when it comes to defining this new velocity vector. And just as a recap on what we're doing here, we have these pieces, right? And we want to draw a new velocity vector between this and the nearest point over here. That will generally push these pieces in this direction. Let's also use a transform to bring this side up a tad bit. So translates, go up like that. And we're going to use a point wrangle to create this new velocity vector. So situate that, and the first thing we ought to do is find the nearest points so that we can read off the position on this stream right here. We'll start with a integer attributes called nearby points. It's equal to the near point function. Take a look through the second input, so that's index one, and we're going to use our current position to look from. I know that because that's what the user docs say right here. Once we do that, let's just double check that that worked. So we'll do a add, delete geo but keep points, and create a new marker with nearby points. And sure enough, it did successfully find the ID. So we know that works. Let's turn this into a variable now. OK, so once we have that, we now can use the point function to read off an attribute from this point from the found point. So we're trying to look for a position because if we take the position over here and we take our current position, that will allow us to draw out a velocity vector. So use the point function and we're going to look through the first inputs. We're looking for P for position and we're going to use nearby points as the point ID. And so we'll just say vector gather position and we'll set it to this right here. So now to actually draw out this vector, all we need to do is take our current position and find the difference between that and our gather pos right here. So this is, this is also going to be a variable vector. We'll call this our, our velocity blend because we'll eventually blend this with our original. And for this, we'll simply say our current position minus gather pos. Now, I can't remember if it's position minus gather pos or the other way around, so we'll figure that out here in a second. But with this information, we can now, let's say, temporarily set our velocity here to vel blend and go to the add. And sure enough, we do have a new velocity. Now, this is actually facing in the wrong direction. So let's go ahead and just invert this real quick. Gather pos minus our current position. And now everything is facing upwards for the most part. OK, so we want to take this velocity and blend that with our original velocity, which looks like that. Now, there's a great function that we can use for this called lerp. And all we do is we say lerp and we take our first value, which let's say that's the vel blend and our current value, which is velocity. And then we have some sort of blend amount. So channel floats. And let's say this is our vel underscore blend. Once we have all that, 
We go ahead and create that new parameter, and now we can blend in between each state. So that's really cool. Let's also add in a multiplier to this whole thing. So times channel vector, a velocity underscore scale. And now we can also just scale up these velocity vectors like so. OK, so let's say that we go about halfway or, well, actually, let's just see what these clumps do first. I'll show you that. And we turn this up a fair bit so it's more obvious. We go to our sim, go forward a few frames, and we should see these things clump up because they're looking at the points. So right there, that is what we get. Now, let's go ahead and take this blend more generally towards our original velocity right here. And also, let's take this velocity noise and set this after our point wrangle. That might be kind of interesting, too. We can experiment with that. But the idea here is that now we have everything we need to start dialing in our exact settings. And that should give us a pretty sweet looking result eventually. Let's also bring in those plates. So we'll call this our plates. And this will be second context geometry. For that, we're going to use an object merge and grab the plates before they get fractured. So that's all the way up here. So after we create the island ID, uh, let's just create a little null here just to stay somewhat organized. We'll say out plates non frac sure or plates non frac out whatever you want to call it doesn't matter go down here bring that in okay that gives us this we're also going to object merge in the points that we used all the way up here from this cache to uh, make all this happen so We'll just take this guy right here. We should probably name this. So set orients. There we go. We'll take the points. We'll do a transform pieces. And we're going to do this by looking at island ID, like so. OK, so now we end up with this, which is pretty cool. But we want to use a convex decomposition on this guy so that we can have a bunch of convex holes to collide against. Set the max concavity to something a bit lower, like 0.15. And we don't really have to cache this out if we don't want to. We can just lock the node right here. That might be the best way to do it, just for organization's sake. But uh, if we lock that, we can now have our plates going like that. This goes to the second input. In the plates, be sure that we say that we want to use the create convex hole per set of connected primitives. So we check that on, plug that in. Just to double check that, show guide geometry. And it's not showing up quite yet. That's because we want to create animated static objects. And once we do that, Let's see what's going on here. Second context, animated. We need to assemble this. That's what's going on. So let's uh, not lock that actually and lock the assemble where we have everything as pack primitives with a name and that should take care of it. Okay, and after creating pack geometry, bringing along island ID, doing the transform pieces, and here in DOPS, we should have this. So it's always really important to show the guide geometry before you move on. That's a classic mistake that gets people all the time. So we know that that's good. Let's go forward a few frames and see what happens. OK, so now we end up with something like this. Uh, we need to dial in the velocity and add some more pieces. So between now and the next video, I'll go ahead and just play around with these settings. But this is the setup that we're looking for. So we'll just work off of this for right now. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.